I've used I've stuff I've learned in marketing Monday at my job, especially in explaining to my boomer boss how advertising to Zoomers works. I don't think I'm the best at advertising to Zoomers. When I was really grinding at NVIDIA to increase sales, Zoomers didn't have money to afford GPUs. <laughs> so they weren't even really part of our target. I think right now, if I really wanted to hone up on it, I would study. If you, if you use, if you make even one TikTok ad, like paid, you get access to the TikTok marketing or advertising dashboard where you can see top performing TikTok ads in your niche and trend. And so I would go pay whatever small fee to get an ad and then I would really study that dashboard because you want to see what the best performing ones week after week is. That's what I would do right now if I was like serious about really honing the craft because that is where you're getting the most eyeballs. Why did you advertise in Fortnite? That's a great question. It was because Fortnite was the most played game, not just among Zoomers. It really, at that time, had a huge explosion and we were targeting college kids at the time for laptops, gaming laptops that were thinner and lighter. That was the, the Fortnite campaign. Because the general ideas, and we did some interviews, to some market research to confirm this, but like students that go to college are very, very, they, they like to game. They want to game. A lot of them really want to get a gaming PC but they're very worried of being seen as weird in class. They know everyone's gonna have a MacBook and they don't wanna have like a fucking alien where they, they open up that goes and lights up RGB. It's a big problem. So they do want those laptop powers, but they want it to be more discreet. And so we did a whole campaign on how they're thinner and lighter and they don't do that. And um, it was successful. Uh, additionally, a lot of people can't afford to buy a laptop going to college without their parents' assistance and their parents want to buy them whatever's best for school. So we also had to make it clear that like, especially if you're getting into STEM, you know, there's a lot of benefits of having a GPU in your, you know, you can do machine learning training, you can do a modeling, you could do Adobe Premiere better if you're making video edits. There's a lot of power, having a good GPU is a powerful thing for a laptop. So we showed all that off and, and it would help, sales went up, it was good. I'm a 21 year old bloke from the UK, market a pen to me. <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna market you some fucking, braces <laughs> get that shit fixed first then we'll worry about a pen little bro how did you discover dj wheat was a person to look up to how did i discover he was a person to look up to oh as a person to look up to i worked with him i worked with him at twitch dj wheat is an iconic probably the very first person to cast esports maybe in the beginning of it all he started a lot of things that eventually you know, like he's the godfather of esports in the west and eventually he became a great team leader and then got hired at twitch and then built out like a huge part of twitch and that's where i met him and i just i have i got huge respect for him but i remember that when i joined twitch my twitter banner profile image was me like posing with dj wheat at a at mlg because <laughs> i had just met him and i was so happy to have met him then I took a photo and then made it my profile banner. And then when I joined the company, he saw that and it was like, great profile banner. <laughs> Welcome to the company. <laughs> Something like that. I was like so fanboy, which was cool. It was cool to finally work with him. The honest reason that I grew to look up to him is because he's a really good leader. And I sort of learned about what a good leader is from DJ Wheat because if you're in a big company, right? Or even a medium sized company, if you're a manager, you are like the, you have to lead your team on one side but you are the point of contact between them and the upper management. And so he would be not harsh as the word, but he would be like, he would be serious to his team and demand, you know, like we have to do a good job and excellence or whatever. But if there was ever pressure from the outside, he was a fucking iron shield. Like he defended his guy, his, his whole team, not his guys, guys and girls, his whole team really well, which was really cool. Like I saw him stand up to people that were higher than him at the company that were trying to like push layoffs or limit the ability of him to promote his people. Or like if you wanted to, if like if someone on his team had an idea, like, hey, let's do this new show or let's do this new thing. Or let's, let's like get the team and travel to this place and, and make something happen for Twitch. He would fight for it. Like he would argue about it until they agreed on their team. But once they agreed, he would fight for it, which is really cool. You know, it's, it's good to have somebody that use like a strong voice for your people to help her management. Yeah, it sucks because he would often get blasted by Reddit, which is not fair at all. It was because DJ Wheat was like the only senior person, and I mean like upper levels, that 
could go on camera and talk normally <laughs> or that could like it could be public facing at all because Emmett Shear was completely absentee the, the CEO and so they would always make like really bad decisions and then uh DJ we would have to be the voice of it he would have to go out and be like hey Twitch we're muting all VODs now or hey Twitch we're getting bought by Amazon or hey Twitch he would have to be the guy that says it even though like he didn't agree with it personally knowing him internally he was like a real voice for creators and a voice for the community and like I don't know. I, I got great respect for the guy. That's all I'll say. Great, great respect for him. I remember there was a clip of DJ Wheat ranting about how his, all his staff got laid off because someone wanted to give Blizzard all the money for the Overwatch League. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. I've talked about this a million times. The Overwatch League is one of the dumbest things Twitch has ever done in the entire history of the company. And that's a, you know, that's a big list. I was there for this. And it was Twitch literally getting just fucking shit stomped in negotiations by Bobby Kotick, basically. Like, this was the launch of the Overwatch League and everyone thought it was going to be a big deal. They thought, oh, it's going to be a big deal. We have to get it on Twitch. But what they didn't realize was that Twitch was more important to Overwatch than Overwatch was to Twitch. Like, if Twitch said, okay, we're not paying, Blizzard would have to fucking make that shit only available on YouTube or something and no one would watch like it didn't especially back then it didn't matter at all but somehow twitch got it in their heads like we have to pay through the fucking nose for this fucking league so they paid a hundred million dollars for the rights to overwatch league for like two years i mean it's so fucking stupid and because of that the budget for everything else had to be cut everything i remember ee -E, ee -E, we went to like the opening game it was uh i decided because i wanted to see it firsthand Toph and I worked at Twitch at the time. We fucking road trip down to LA because we were up in the Bay to go see the first Overwatch League game. And we picked up EE on the way. We watched it with him. I remember that. And I remember, I remember, I'll say this honestly. EE was very polite, but I could tell, especially by the end of it, he was so fucking bored. <laughs> Because I, mean, I, I was a little bored too. The game was boring. It's not that fun to watch. I remember you were like, because you didn't even, you didn't even play. Like me and Tova at least have played the game. If you haven't played Overwatch, that game, that is so fucking boring to watch. And their broadcasts were long. I specifically remember, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Once those free drinks ran out, I was checked out. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I remember, because we, we got to go to, like, the little green room area or whatever, and we were getting fucking free drinks and snacks, but, like, it was so boring. I mean, that, it really is a terrible spectator sport. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. Anyway, yeah, Twitch drastically overpaid. Drastically. I mean, just really stupid. And I remember I sat next to some finance guys uh, who I really liked. I would play Smash with them. I'm not going to name their names because... They all still work in the industry. <laughs> but they, every day, would have someone who was an executive or someone higher up trying to get this deal through come by their desk and basically pressure them into making very misleading financial models <laughs> that, like, implied that this is going to be profitable for Twitch. <laughs> Just like, yeah, and if we sell enough Overwatch League subscriptions on Twitch and people buy the, the secret McCree emote and the drops go up and that way it increases our viewership and the, then we're definitely gonna make a hundred million dollars back. And they didn't, they, it's not even close, not even close, not even close. But they needed that to get it through, you know, because they have to go to like fucking Jeff Bezos and get a hundred million dollars. Yeah, it was a disaster. But I have a cool icon next to his name, so it was worth it. You have the Overwatch League All Access Pass 26, 2018. <laughs> you got one! You bought the All Access Pass 2018! Holy shit! If there were just 20 million more people like you, they would have made money on that thing. You were part of the model. That's awesome. Pog, pog, pog. Good shit. Itrek, I recently got a job at Amazon Games for marketing. I have no marketing experience. Well, they have no making games experience, so you're good. <laughs> It'll work out. You're all you're all figuring it out as you go. I am GM in Overwatch, but I've seen more pro league games than pro Overwatch games. Yeah, they're just not fun to watch. Overwatch is just too messy. They, they tried a lot of ways to make it work, but it's just not that fun to watch. Do you miss the corporate grussel? Not really, no. I kind of like the structure. That was nice. There's so many parts of corporate work that suck, even when the job's good. And I, I it's almost very lucky I got to figure that out. <laughs> Because in my mind, I really am a high, highly recommended, like a highly, I would highly recommend a company like NVIDIA. I think NVIDIA is a very, treats their employees really well. And so I couldn't blame it on like a bad boss. I had a great boss. I couldn't blame it on the pay. The pay was great. <laughs> There's just some parts of it that are like inherently soul sucking. I, I think I, yeah, I think I just, I got, I got the answer. Permission to go to Benjamin City. Cheers, my friends. Permission granted.